Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. Hey, podcast listener. Welcome to the Overseas Prop Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor White. I am proud to say this episode is brought to your earbuds courtesy of, well, me. If you're a homeowner, agent, or developer, and you want to showcase your properties to my worldwide audience, then you should listen up. As host of the number one ranked overseas real estate podcast in iTunes that has been downloaded thousands of times by listeners in over 68 countries, they all have one thing in common, an interest in seeing your overseas property listings. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash list and get started today. We hear from a mortgage insider today when I sit down and speak with Tim Lucas, who has been featured in U.S. World and News Report, Main Street, Law 360, MSN, Yahoo, Realtor, and is editor-in-chief of My Mortgage Insider and coming to your earbuds from the great state of Washington. With overseas real estate financing options drying up, Tim and I will speak more about mortgage financing options inside the U.S. on domestic real estate to get the cash together to buy overseas real estate, including conventional cash out refis, FHA, VA, reverse mortgages, and home equity loans and lines of credit. Don't worry if you don't know what these are. Tim does an awesome job of clearly specifying what type of borrower should go with which type of loan. Instead of telling you more, let's join Tim from the My Mortgage Insider headquarters. Tim, what's going on? It's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the podcast straight from My Mortgage Insider headquarters so we can get to know you personally. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm from uh, Bellevue, Washington area, just east of Seattle. And I live not too far from the office in Redmond, which is Microsoft country, uh, if you've heard of it. And uh, have, uh, you know, been in the mortgage industry for a while. Um, and uh, love to talk to you today, Taylor. Tim, been in the mortgage industry for a while is an understatement. I've seen you everywhere. U.S. News and World Report, MainStreet.com, Law360, MSN, Yahoo, Realtor. I mean everywhere. Tell us a bit more about yourself professionally and your awesome website, MyMortgageInsider.com. Well, I got started in about 2001 at Washington Mutual as just a really entry-level mortgage loan processor. Kind of worked my way up and was an assistant for one of the Seattle's uh, major loan officers who dealt with a really high-end clientele. From there, I became a loan officer myself, working with uh, lots of first-time home buyers, 20 and 30-something kind of people. So I have a kind of a wide range of clients that I worked with. And about a year ago, a company called MyMortgageInsider.com uh, gave me a call and they needed to build their website using somebody who actually knew something about mortgage. They had you know, some mortgage websites but didn't actually have anybody on staff that knew much about them. So they contacted me and you know, by that time I had uh, over 11 years of experience in all sides of the business. So you know, from there I started writing for their website and today I have MyMortgageInsider.com which is one of the leading resources for everything to do with real estate and mortgage. Well, Tim, we focus on the overseas real estate niche, but financing overseas is getting tougher and tougher. So instead, we're going to talk about local mortgage financing options. We have five awesome ones that we're going to talk about, a cash out refi, FHA loans, veterans and active duty military, reverse mortgages, home equity loans and lines of credit. But starting off, one of the most common ways is a conventional cash out refi. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, conventional cash out refi is going to be your most flexible option as far as cash out refis. There are other government sponsored options, which are a little less flexible. But they, in, in essence, the conventional cash out is where you're going to open a conventional loan for a, 
for a bigger loan balance than you have currently on your home. So you can open it up on your primary residence, which is probably going to be the most common way to do it. Also, if you have a rental property or an investment property or a vacation home somewhere that has enough equity, you can actually open up a conventional cash out refi on those as well. Hey, Tim, I'm just curious. I know that you're based in the state of Washington. Would what we're talking about today just be in Washington or would it be U.S. what? These are nationwide programs. So conventional, everything I t I'm going to talk about today is available nationwide from just about any lender out there. Okay, so if we're going to talk about a conventional cash out refi, why don't we talk about an owner occupied home because that's the easiest. Maybe talk about a little bit about what we can do loan to value wise and then maybe if you feel comfortable, some example rates. Sure. Um, so on an owner occupied home, uh, it's best to have maybe 30 to 40 percent equity in the home. The reason is because you're going to be able to go up to 80 percent of your current value for the new loan amount. So it's basically just like if you buy a home to avoid private mortgage insurance, you're going to put 20 percent down. You're also going to want 20 percent equity uh, when you're completed with your cash out refi. So assuming that you have 30 to 40 percent uh, equity in your home, you can end up with about 20% of that home's equity in your pocket. And so essentially, let's say you have a home for, you know, $200,000. It's worth $200,000. You owe 100000 on it. Uh, you could take a loan up to about 150000 And after some loan costs, et cetera, you walk away with about forty to $45,000. And obviously, these numbers are going to skyrocket once you get into three, four, five hundred thousand dollar $500,000 value of the home, just because you're talking about bigger real dollars there. And then, Tim, we're talking about a conventional refinance. So, so like we're not talking about HARP or VA Streamline or an FHA Streamline. We're talking about conventional, right? Right. This is conventional. So you're talking about Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac sponsored programs, which arguably are, I guess, government loans because the government kind of owns everything at this point. But right. <laughs> uh, traditionally speaking, these were government sponsored enterprises, uh, also called GSEs, which uh, were basically privately owned companies that just help the liquidity of the mortgage market. So they're, you know, the, these mortgages that are opened up are taken on by investors who pump money back into the system. So basically, these are the least risky type of loans that, you know, just about anybody can get. So then, Tim, we just focused on owner-occupied homes, which is fantastic. A lot of investors or people that want to invest overseas to maybe buy a lot in Nicaragua or a beach house in Costa Rica or something like that might do it on a rental home or a vacation or second home. Can you talk more about the cash-out value there and then maybe some rates? Sure. The uh, cash-out options for vacation and investment properties are almost as good as your options for owner occupied. So you're going to be able to go up to 75% of your current value with the new loan amount. So you're going to want to have, you know, again, 40 to maybe 50% equity in that home, depending on the actual total value of the home. But yeah, you're going to be able to cash it out to a pretty good amount. The rates on that are going to be higher than for an owner occupied just because it is considered a more risky loan type. So maybe on an owner occupied, you're looking at the mid 4% range. And then on a investment property, you're looking at more towards uh, high fours or even 5%, uh, a lot depending on your credit score. So the rates do vary a little bit, but historically, if you're talking about getting cash in your pocket at a rate of between four and a half and 5%, you're talking about rates that are just historically rock bottom. So just a few years ago, they were six, seven, eight, nine percent in the early 2000s. So being able to cash out your home at that rate is actually pretty incredible. Another thing I'd like to bring up is just credit scores. So for conventional loans across the board, you're going to have to have a pretty good credit score, something between you know 680 and you know all the way up to 7, 760, 780. But 680 kind of being the bottom if you're talking about cash out loans because lenders are going to want to make sure you're pretty qualified. Uh, since it is considered a riskier loan type. Yeah, Tim, that's something that I wanted to follow up on. How is qualifying for a loan today in mid-2014 the same or different than it was during the great years up through maybe 2007? 
is qualifying harder now? Is it easier now? Is it the same? Speak more about that. I think it's harder now. Before you had a lot of portfolio lenders coming out with various loan programs. So for instance, back in 2006, 2007, there may have been lenders who kept a lot of loans on their books that said, hey, we'll give you a cash out to 90% or 95% on an investment property and you don't even have to give us anything more than maybe one pay stub. Right. So th those kind of loans are, are gone. I remember doing a uh, loan down in Santa Barbara, uh, two and a half million dollar loan. Uh, they were cashing out. He had a credit score of about 620 to 640. And this is a very prominent person that if I mentioned his name, you'd probably know. And he he has income, but it was very hard to document. And he got a something like $500,000 cash out on a $2.5 million loan and didn't provide a single tax return pay stub uh, or employment information. So those were the crazy days. Those days are gone. However, for people who are well qualified, they have an income source, they have decent credit, you know, not a lot of mortgage lates. These loans are definitely doable and they're not probably not as hard as a lot of people would expect. So then, Tim, as one follow up, I know that a lot of people have foreclosures on their credit reports from the call it crash in 2008 or 2009. Where do people that have a foreclosure stand with trying to get a cash out refi? Well, typically on a conventional refi, you have to be out of your bankruptcy, foreclosure, etc. probably about seven years before you're, you can get a cash out refi. At that point, if you do have you know some kind of really major derogatory item on your credit in the past few years, I would definitely lean towards a FHA cash out or a VA cash out. So, Tim, why don't we then roll into an FHA loan um, with a cash out? Maybe speak more about that, um, what people can do as far as a loan to value, maybe some example interest rates. Sure. Um, again, you're going to be looking in the probably you know 4% range up to 45 for an FHA cash out, depending on your credit and the specific lender. FHA cash out is great because it's a little bit more flexible than a conventional cash out. You can go up to 85% of your current value, first of all. Uh, you don't have to have an FHA loan currently. You can have any kind of loan type and, and do an FHA cash out. And they're going to take your current appraised value. So if you've experienced 20 30% equity appreciation in the last couple of years, like many people in the in many areas of the country have seen, then you're going to be able to take that full amount. You know, it's not based on what you originally bought it for or anything like that. It's today's value. Another thing is, you know, you can have a lower credit score. There's some lenders that may be able to go down to 640 credit score for an FHA cash out. And uh, that's where it pays off to just shop around lenders because there's going to be different lenders who have different programs or different guidelines to the same program. And so, you know, one FHA lender may say you need a 680. The FHA lender across the street may say, oh, 640 is fine. So you just have to kind of shop around according to your situation. Same thing with major derogatory items on your credit. You know, standard FHA guidelines are at about two years before you can look at another FHA loan after you've had a major derogatory item like a uh, bankruptcy or foreclosure. Some are going to be three to four years, depending on the lender. And it's all on a case by case basis. So if you have a major event in your life, that's a, a single time, you know, single thing that happened because of the economy and it's not likely to happen again, you're going to be much more able to get a loan rather than, you know, somebody who just kind of has blatant disregard for their credit. But I'd imagine that your listeners are going to be pretty upstanding individuals. And if they do have bankruptcies or foreclosures, it's going to be because of a one-time event, you know, a, a self-employed business went under because of the economy or they had, uh, you know, a medical emergency or something like that. So then, Tim, this begs the question, if for an FHA loan, I can have a lower credit score, rates are still pretty good, I can have a higher loan to value, why don't I just do an FHA versus a conventional cash out? That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. It's because of the massive FHA mortgage insurance. And uh, you probably, anybody who follows real estate or mortgage news have probably heard of FHA continually increasing their uh, mortgage insurance premiums. And so with a conventional, if you have 20% equity, you have zero mortgage insurance costs. You know, that's 
couple hundred bucks a month that you're not going to have to pay. With FHA, you're looking at an upfront fee of 1.75% of the loan amount, and that gets financed back into the loan amount. So you're looking at a, initially a higher loan amount, plus you're going to have to pay most likely between 1.25 and 1.35% of the loan amount per year based on monthly installments. So if you have a $200,000 loan amount with FHA, you're going to be paying, you know, say about $2,500 a year in mortgage insurance costs. So it does add anywhere from like 100 to 350, 400 a month to your costs because you're going FHA. And these loans that we're talking about, would these be examples of like a 30-year fixed or is it a 30-year interest only? Is this a 15-year? Maybe talk a little bit more about the term of the loan. Sure. All these uh, within the 4 to 5% range are going to be 30-year fixed mortgages. So the payment is never going to change, you know, obviously, unless your homeowner's insurance or taxes change. But the payment, principal and interest payment itself is not going to change uh, ever. And these are principal and interest or not interest-only loans. Interest-only loans are really hard to find. And thanks to new rules, they're going to be continually more hard to find. Um, so most, I'd say 95 to 99 percent of the loans out there, you're gonna, they're going to be fixed for the life of the loan, and you're going to be knocking off a portion of the principal each month. Now, there are 15-year loans available in all of these options that I'm talking about today. So conventional, FHA, VA, they all have 15 and 20 and some 25-year options. So if you wanted to knock down your interest rate a little bit, you know, something in the threes, then you could probably opt for a 15-year loan on any of these options. And uh, those are considered a lot less risk because uh, the investor has to hold that note for quite a bit shorter time, a uh, lot shorter time for you to be able to default. And so they give you a better interest rate in return. So then, Tim, I'm curious about people that are self-employed. Is it harder to get loans now if you're self-employed than it was a few years ago? And is it any different being self-employed than if you're employed? It is uh, quite a bit different. Um, being self-employed does raise a lot of extra uh, documentation issues. So that's kind of where the stated income, stated asset loans came from in the early 2000s. Because you know, investors, people with a lot of rental properties or who have started their own business, uh, had tax returns two feet thick. And they didn't want the underwriter to spend two to three weeks analyzing those returns. And, uh, you know, you never know what the underwriter is going to find when they get through all that. They might ask a myriad of questions. So that's where that stated income thing came from. Of course, people abused it, saying they made $10,000 a month at McDonald's. Uh, but um, originally, the stated income loan that was available 2005, 2006, did a great help to these uh, uh, investors and self-employed people who have really complicated tax returns. So nowadays, people do have to bring in those tax returns. They do have to be analyzed, and it is a little bit tougher for them to be approved if they're writing off a lot of expenses. Say you're a, a dentist who is self-employed and you're writing off a ton of you know, vehicle expenses and office equipment expenses, and at the end of the year, at the end of the day, you know, you're looking at your tax returns and, oh, you only made $30,000 because you wrote off the rest. That kind of stuff is hard to get around because there's not much income left to qualify. Of course, people do that for to pay less taxes, but it can end up biting them in the butt when they go to get a mortgage. So, Tim, so far we've talked about a conventional cash-out refi. We've also talked about an FHA Cash out refi. Why don't we move on to a VA loan? Maybe talk more about what it is, who can qualify, and then maybe some example loan to values and rates. So VA cash out is definitely the way to go. If you have military experience or if you're currently on active duty, um, this is a special loan type that's only available to people with military experience kind of as a thank you for risking their life to keep us all free here in the U.S. And what it is is uh, you can do a VA cash out to 100% of your current value, which sounds crazy, right? Like you, in, in today's world of, you know, everybody pushing you to 20 to 25% down that uh, there's a loan type that you can get 100% of your value, but it's, that's how it is. So you can 
have maybe only 10 to 15 percent equity in your home at the current moment and if your your value is high enough you can go cash that out to 100 percent of your uh, loan amount another great benefit to va is that there's no monthly mortgage insurance believe it or not so that eliminates the couple hundred bucks a month that you would have had to pay on on fha there's a small 2.15 percent upfront fee that's added back onto your loan amount so you end up with uh, a loan amount of about 102 percent of your current value um, but it is a really powerful loan program for anybody with military experience rates are going to be in the low fours if not high threes because va loans are statistically one of the safest loans for investors to invest in just because of that guarantee that the government provides to pay back the lender in case of default. So you're looking at low fours, maybe slightly higher for a VA cash out depending on the lender. Again, this is where shopping around helps because different lenders are going to have different guidelines. Some may only go to 90 to 95 percent, but there are many lenders that go to 100 percent on a VA cash out. So then, Tim, talk to me about a VA cash out. Who can qualify? What qualifies as active or past military experience? Sure. Well, right now, if you've been in the military on active duty for 90 plus days, you can qualify for a a VA cash out. And that's because we're in officially in wartime right now. Once the Persian Gulf conflict slash Afghanistan is as declared over, then it'll be 181 days in active duty. But right now, you only have to be on active duty 90 days to participate in the program. Otherwise, if you've had military experience in the past, you're now a veteran, you can have anywhere from 90 days up to two years, depending on when you served. And there's uh, kind of some complicated formulas that they figure out. But basically, The best way to do it is call a VA loan officer and pull a certificate of eligibility, which will tell you within any anywhere from within 10 minutes to a couple days whether you're eligible. And that certificate of eligibility just says, yeah, here's when you served. You are eligible or you're not eligible for this kind of loan. And Tim, I'm curious. Let's say that there's a husband and wife and the husband served, let's say, 30 or 40 years ago. And the loans going in both of their names, though, do both of them have to be a veteran or just one? No, just one. So the spouse can be on the loan and on title. Uh, There's no restrictions on on that. The only way that might not work is if the is if the uh, wife went on title by herself without the veteran on the title or the loan. The veteran would have to be on the loan and on title to participate. So then, Tim, why don't we move on to another great option, which is a reverse mortgage. And I believe that those are available for those that are 62 and older. Can you speak more about a reverse mortgage? Yeah, a reverse mortgage is for somebody, like you said, 62 and older, who has just a ton of equity in their house. So I would say bare minimum on this program would be probably 50% equity, preferably more, because what the reverse mortgage does is it eliminates all your monthly mortgage payments. So you're totally freed up as far as your monthly payments. So if you have kind of a lower income, you're heading into retirement, you want to kind of clear up your monthly expenses as much as possible and get cash out at the same time, you're going to want to look into a reverse mortgage. Uh, Basically all you're going to be responsible for on your primary residence is your homeowner's insurance and your property taxes and any HOA dues, if any. And the rest of it is covered until you pass away or you move out of the house. And so this is a great option for people with a lot of equity. You want to eliminate your monthly mortgage payment and you want to get a lump sum or monthly payments. Um, For instance, you could, if you have maybe $100,000 owed on a five or $600,000 house, you can take a big chunk of cash out, uh, eliminate your monthly mortgage payment, and uh, use that money for international real estate investing or whatever you'd like. And then when you're out traveling, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I make my monthly mortgage payment? Well, you don't have a payment, so you're totally free to go. And then, Tim, just curious, on the reverse mortgage, do you have to qualify for it or provide any kind of documentation as far as income or credit score or those kinds of things? Well, it's pretty lenient. It is a, it is an FHA loan. Uh, however, the documentation requirements are pretty 
pretty minimal. So they have added some new rules to make sure that you can afford your property taxes and insurance because what they had was a lot of people who would completely uh, cash out their home with a reverse mortgage and then not be able to pay their taxes. So there may be some small financial assessment just to make sure you can keep up on your taxes. However, they don't really analyze your income or your uh, credit score. So I've seen people with a 450 credit score because of you know, massive medical debt um, that they couldn't pay because they didn't have enough money. They've walked in and gotten a loan. So it's pretty incredible what you can do with reverse mortgaging, if, even if you've had pretty significant credit problems in the past. So, Tim, why don't we touch on one more, and we're going to talk about a home equity loan or a home equity line of credit. Can you speak more about what that is? Sure. This is probably the easiest and cheapest way to go if you're going to look for a cash-out refi, simply because the costs on a home equity loan or home equity line of credit is so much lower than all the standard loan costs, say, with a conventional cash-out, FHA or VA cash-out. You know, typically the appraisal costs are lower on a home equity line of credit or loan, and your your processing time is going to be maybe a couple weeks instead of, uh, you know, four to five weeks. And uh, basically what they are is you're just keeping your existing first mortgage and you're taking equity out in the form of cash with this home equity line of credit. So basically the bank or credit union is giving you the difference between what you owe now and what your property is worth. So if you have a $400,000 house, you owe two fifty dollars on it, you could potentially get $150,000 cash in your pocket with really small loan costs and uh, really short processing time. There's a couple options. A home equity loan is just basically like another fixed payment loan where you're, pay- you, you're going to pay it back in principal and interest installments each month. The rate's going to be f- fixed most likely. There's another one, home equity line of credit, where it's basically like a credit card. You have a variable interest rate on it, usually based on the prime rate, which is super low right now, I think 0%. Uh, my home equity loan is at 3% right now, so it's really low. And basically, it's it's an interest-only payment, so you're typically not going to pay principal on it unless you want to for a certain amount of uh, years, usually five to 10 years. So you have cash that you can use and just pay interest on for a certain amount of time and pay it back as you please. And so I was doing some research uh, on what kind of home equity loans and lines of credit are available today because they did dry up in the 2008-2009 timeframe where nobody would lend on, uh, nobody would give you a home equity line of credit at all. And I was looking at a local bank called Boeing Employees Credit Union, BECU, which you've probably heard of Boeing. So it's the credit union for uh, their employees. And they're offering home equity loans up to 100% of your current value, which is pretty amazing considering, you know, how far we've come in the last couple of years as far as home equity loans. So I imagine across the country there are certain credit unions, banks, lenders who will give you a loan upwards of 100% of your your uh, value. So Tim, I would love to wrap up our call with action steps if we can. What are some final tips or strategies that you might want to recommend for listeners? And I wanted to actually add something to that with a little caveat. We've talked about five main mortgage options. And maybe if we can wrap up, who should go for each one? And for the first one, we have a conventional cash out refi. Who is this perfect for? This is great for somebody with great credit they have significant equity in their home and they've been responsible with their mortgage payments in the past and they just want a good 30-year fixed loan that's stable that they know they're they can count on the payment going forward for the next 30 years no matter what they do okay perfect and then who is an FHA loan for that's great for somebody with kind of a lower credit maybe not as much equity in their home Uh, maybe they have a little bit extra income to pay for their mortgage insurance and need a little bit more flexibility that the FHA loan provides. And then talk about a VA loan. So that's really anybody with any kind of military experience should check that first just because there's no mortgage insurance and there's so much flexibility with the uh, credit score requirements as well as loan to value requirements. Um, You can go up to, like I said, usually 100% of your 
current value and you know the rates are great so anybody with military experience even just a little bit should check and make sure that you know whether or not they're eligible for that one first before they try anything else and then let's head up on a reverse mortgage yeah somebody 62 and older really cash or really home equity rich but not a lot of uh, cash on hand that just wants to eliminate their monthly mortgage payments uh, one caveat to that is that you do have to live in the home for six months out of the year. So, you know, great for people who leave for a couple months at a time and then come back. You do have to maintain your your primary residence as far as your um, your home base, basically. But you there's no restrictions on leaving for a couple months at a time as long as you're home for six months out of the year. Uh, great for somebody who just wants to eliminate that the mental hassle of making their monthly mortgage payment while they're visiting overseas or on vacation. And somebody who wants to take a cash out lump sum without having any payments on that until they either move out of the house or pass away. And then the final one that we talked about, a home equity loan or a home equity line of credit. Yeah, this is great for somebody who has you know decent credit but doesn't necessarily want to take out a whole new loan. So if you have a maybe a really low, you refinance and you have maybe 35 to 4% interest rate, on your home, on your first mortgage currently, maybe you don't want to do a cash out because then you're going to incur kind of a bigger interest rate on that entire balance plus whatever you borrow. Maybe you just want to get a second mortgage that gives you cash out for the for the remaining equity in your home, which could be pretty substantial. Plus you get greater flexibility with how much of your value you can get out in cash. Plus, you have some options, whether you want to pay interest only or you want to make a principal and interest payment. Love it, Tim. Those are five great options. What are the best ways to follow and connect with you? Well, I, mean, my, I work the most on uh, Google+, Plus, which is a little bit different than most people. Probably a lot of people work on Facebook, but um, I found Google+, Plus to be kind of uh, friendly for what I do. Just search in the Google+, Plus search bar, Tim Lucas, My Mortgage Insider. And you'll see some of my posts and my profile. That's probably the easiest way to find me there. Otherwise, Twitter, my handle is at MMI, which stands for My Mortgage Insider, underscore Tim. So at MMI underscore Tim. And you'll find some posts. I try to do some cool you know, graphic representations, some charts, some photos, and different things as, along with my tweets to make it a little more interesting. So check that out. Otherwise, check out MyMortgageInsider.com. If you have any questions, there's a section on there called Ask Tim, and you can submit a question to me, and I will turn it into a blog post if I feel it's a, a question that might answer a lot of people's uh, inquiries. And then, Tim, just curious, finally, can people deal with you to get a mortgage, or are you the information guy? I'm kind of the information guy right now. I do know a lot of people, though, so if you do have a question or would like to get financing, I can definitely refer you. There's also a form on my website that you can complete uh, for any kind of loan amount, anything that we talked about today. Just complete your information, hit send, and you'll be directed to one of our loan officers. Love it, Tim. Thanks again for coming on, and I hope we can do it again sometime soon. Yeah, me too. Thanks a lot, Taylor. I want to thank Tim once again for coming on the show and breaking down the different mortgage options U.S. real estate holders can do to get the cash to buy overseas real estate. You can head on over to our site for complete show notes, easy ways to follow and connect with Tim, and more information about his fantastic business at My Mortgage Insider. And don't forget, if you're a homeowner, agent, or developer and want to showcase your properties to my listener base in over 68 countries, then I invite you to list your properties with us head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash list to get started. You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White. Be sure to hit up irelpodcast.com for more. That's irelpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.